Hello everyone. Welcome to skadia.com. My name is Dr. Divan Ojla and the topic of the lecture today is Avila lung diseases. In this lecture we're going to talk about what diseases come under the heading of Avila lung diseases. What pathologies are under this division of the pathological diseases. We're going to talk about which substances are accumulated inside of alveoli that it reach up to such maximum level of impact that it causes disease. We're going to talk about how water will accumulate, we're going to talk about how blood is accumulated, we're going to talk about in which cases proteins will accumulate, in which cases lipids will accumulate, in which cases it will be idiopathic, we won't even know the cause of it. So let's get into it. First of all, we're going to talk about diffuse alveolar damage. In diffuse alveolar damage, we're going to talk about how it's affected, why hyaline membrane is formed inside of it, why pulmonary edema occurs inside of it, what's the pathogenesis of it, which structures are affected, and how do we tackle it, and how the patient is going to present to us. Next on, we're going to talk about alveolar proteinosis. We're going to talk about how the proteins get to the alveolar level, what's the pathogenesis of this disease, how surfactant plays a major role in this disease, what's the pathogenesis of it, and how the patient is going to present to us in this disease. Next on, we're going to talk about diffuse pulmonary hemorrhagic syndromes. It's actually a heading which contains three subheadings. These are good posture syndromes, it is idiopathic ones, and then there's a granulomatosis with polyangitis. We're going to talk about how three, these three diseases are going to affect the basement membrane and structures around it in such a way that blood will start accumulating inside the alveoli. And when the blood is accumulating inside the alveoli, how it's going to affect the whole system of the lungs, how it's going to affect the whole system of the blood. If it's Yes, it leads to uh, blood in the cuff and stuff like that, but it also leads to iron deficiency anemia because the blood is pouring out. So we're going to discuss how this happens. Next on, we're going to talk about eosinophilic pneumonia. Eosinophilic pneumonia is the most talked about topic among the pneumonias because in most of the cases, we don't even know the reason behind it. We're going to talk about what are the idiopathic uh, pneumonias inside of it. And then we're going to talk about what are the secondary eosinophilic pneumonias in which we do know the cause. In which the cause will be either bacterial, or either viral, either parasitical, either fun fungi, and what drugs affect it, what structures affect it. We're going to talk about all of it, its pathogenesis, and then how the patient is, present, uh, is going to present to you and which signs you are to look for to find and diagnose a patient with eosinophilic pneumonia. Then we're going to talk about endogenous pneumonia. In endogenous pneumonia, we're going to talk about how the lipids accumulate inside of it, how the pneumonia is caused because of it, what's the pathogenesis behind it. And at the end, we're going to talk about exogenous pneumonia in which exogenous lipids will be formed. We're going to talk about which, uh, specifically which items in our usage, in our daily use are going to cause this kind of disease in which lipids will start accumulating outside of it and will won't be affected but the areas around it will be affected by it and uh, lipids will accumulate and how we're going to talk about what's the pathogenesis of it we're going to talk about how the patient is going to present to us to watch this complete video and other different lectures on different topics and varieties please subscribe to sky.com thank you very much